Thanks for tuning in guys to the Pest and Lawn Ginger. We are back on the project lawn. And today's question is, is how many minutes of water a day should you be running your sprinkler? Well, we're gonna go over that and more today on the project lawn. As a general recap, this project lawn is just below 7,000 square feet. When I got here in April, it was nearly dead. Check out these before and after pictures. Now we've done a lot to this lawn between dethatching, scarifying, fertilization, but I would say the number one thing that has turned this lawn around has been and proper watering. I've been sharing this journey because it's been a very difficult journey to get to this point and watering has been something that we've even struggled with on this lawn. So let's get right back into the subject of how many minutes of watering that you should do on your own lawn when it gets hot outside. Our average temperatures lately here in Utah have been well above 90 degrees. Our humidity is very low. Evaporation is very high. Now as far as how many minutes of water that you should be watering, it's kind of a loaded question and let me explain why. Flow rate, pressure, the way that every head is lined. Now, if you want a short generic answer for just the average sprinkler head out there, it's gonna be somewhere between 20 and 25 minutes daily equivalent. But the real answer is not how many minutes you should water, it's how many inches of water you need to put back into the soil to replace evaporation. So let me kind of show you the difference between what two inches of water a week looks like versus one inch of water a week looks like. Now, some of this you're gonna say, hey, Ginger, I've been watching your channel and we know that we had a lot of Bermuda grass in there, but here's the difference. We get really on top of it and we are absolutely bone dry. It just can't keep up with evaporation. We literally skip across this line here and it's all green. So the reason why we have such a straight line box here is because of our irrigation system. We chose to uh, install an irrigation system called Irrigreen. They did not pay us to put that in here and it's been working working fantastic. Now here's the difference between Irrigreen and all the other systems. With our Irrigreen system, we can choose how many inches of water per week that we want to put down. You're probably wondering why this area just isn't popping the same. And that's because of a couple of things. Number one, we had a broken sprinkler head in this area, but I'm going to show you some footage from about three weeks ago where we were having some severe slope issues where all the water was just pooling up in this area and causing a massive problem. So then we had too much water. We had a little bit a fungal response, but that's how much water will dictate your success. So that area is getting about two to three X the water. This area is getting about one to two times the water in this entire section. You can kind of see this pattern that's starting to form. The conclusion that we're coming to is that we've got a grading issue. Now from this angle, you're gonna be able to see it a lot better. It's almost like a 45 degree slope. It's occurring where we're dry here, but it's almost got a little bit of a hump. Then the water line goes down this way and starts heading that direction. Now, if we look on the horizon, you can see how far down it starts dipping. When you're dealing with 7,000 square feet of grass, it's a lot of water travel. Hey, ever the subject home, and get back to the original question of how much do you have to water when it gets hot outside? And really the name of the game again is to replace evaporation that is occurring in the area. And that's how we keep the grass green. Luckily for us, there are organizations out there like the uh, extensions to the agricultural department. Now, most of you guys out there in your major cities are going to have access to this data. It's usually on a website. I'll post a link in the description of the video to the website that, that we built that has this longitudinal data on it. So you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like. It tells you every single month how much rain and precipitation that you're receiving. Also how hot it is outside in conjunction with evaporation rate. Now this is going to kind of give us an idea of how many inches of water per month that you need to do to your lawn in order to replace the evaporation and in return, your plants and your grass will stay green. So the best part is, is this gives you a baseline of what you need to have on your lawn. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to take that data and figure out our water output rate in our own lawn by doing what's called a water output cup test. Now, this is very simple. Now, these little cups are my absolute favorite. These are just called rain gauge catch cups. I'll post a link in the description of the video in case you guys wanna buy them. I personally bought these. I'm a firm believer in them and I've got like three sets of them. And what I do is I take a minimum of 10 to 20 of them, depending on how big my zone is, and I put them in a grid in my lawn. Now, here's the thing that you need to understand. We're doing this uh, test for two reasons. Number one, we wanna figure out the hourly output. Number two, we want to identify if we have any sprinkler 
other coverage problems. And it's gonna tell us that. So I usually start my first cup within the first three or four feet of the sprinkler head. And I'm just going to grid it out in the lawn in both areas that are struggling and in areas that are good. Now this is gonna give me a baseline. Next, I'm going to run a 20 minute cycle on my sprinklers. Then I'm gonna take a piece of paper and I like to get on Google Maps, zoom in on my property, and then I like to identify where I put those cups. Uh, and I usually label them A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Then I'm going to take the data that I received in cup A, 0.2, cup B, 0.2, cup C, 0.35. Cup D, I have 0.1. And cup C, I have 0.2. So we're trying to figure out what the baseline is. So if the average cup is 0.2, we know that the other cups that aren't matching at 0.2, we have some sprinkler adjustments that need to be made. Now, the best part about this is, again, is we're figuring out water output. So now we know our hourly output is 0.2 times 3 because we ran a 20 minute cycle. So that would make it at 0.2 six per hour. Then we need to focus on the areas that we're getting too much water or too little, adjust those sprinkler heads so we can get them all matching. And that's the name of the game. So if you are hiring a sprinkler guy, this is a way that you can protect yourself to make sure that you're getting the most bang for your buck from your sprinkler guy. And he actually achieved what you wanted him to do, which was fix the sprinkler coverage. Now, most sprinkler guys aren't gonna do this because it takes time. But again, this is a tool that you can use at home to verify that your sprinklers have good coverage. And it is, it is one of the best tools in the box. There's a few tools like this and the dethatcher and scarifier that I tell people they should absolutely have 100%. So our 20 minutes is up. Let's see what we got in the cup. And you can see, just like I was telling you before, my hourly output is very low and I'm about 0.1 of an inch in the cup. And these cups are so convenient. This is what I was telling you. But it's very important that we don't just look at the first one, right? Wanna examine every single one of them. And if you guys are new out there, it's very important to really write this stuff down. And this one's about 0.15, not too off to get too concerned about. This one right here is just the standard 0.1 like usual. And we wanna see if we have any outliers, right? Meaning we have a cup that is just way above normal. So let's talk about this really quick. We've got all the cups in a grid fashion. So the whole point is, is we're trying to figure out if a few of these cups have more or less than the majority of them. Because the majority of them are gonna tell us what our flat line output is. And in my case, it's 0.1 of an inch. So my hourly output is gonna be multiplied by three at 0.3. But let's just say three of these cups, one in the corner is at 0.25. One of the cups is just empty and the other cup is at 0.22. Those areas are gonna be our identifiers where the sprinkler coverage needs to be fixed. And so this test is so important because not only is it telling us our hourly output, but it's also going to identify where we need to make the repairs. So now you're probably wondering, okay, well, what do we do with this information? We know that the 20 minute output is 0.1 of an inch. Well, the whole goal is to figure out our hourly output and then to figure out how many minutes that we need to water with whatever schedule that we're gonna create. So on 20 minutes, we are at 0 0.1. So we're gonna multiply that by three. So we are 0.3 of an inch per hour is what our output is. So now that we know the output, we're gonna take how many inches of water we need per week. In my region, it's 100 degrees outside, so evaporation is very high. We are at two inches according to the chart. So I'm going to divide that by 0.3. That gives us 6.66 hours, which is just a little bit above six and a half hours of watering per week. So on my plan, I like to water three days a week. So I'm going to divide that by three. And so now I know on a three day a week plan, I need to be at 2.22 hours of watering in this zone when I water, which is roughly about two hours, 15 minutes. And so it's important that you understand the output per zone because it can change. Now, I know a lot of you guys out there thinking, Ginger, that is a long time to be watering. But again, time is only relevant to output when you understand what it is. So let's look at it this way. If you had just a normal 
high flow system, right? And your 20 minute output was a quarter of an inch. We're gonna multiply that by three to get to our hourly output, which is three quarters of an inch. Then on top of that, we're gonna divide two by the three quarters of an inch, which gives us 2.66 hours of watering per week, which is about two hours and 40 minutes. So then we're gonna divide that by three, and that ends up being about 50 minutes per zone on a three day week plan. So you're thinking to yourself, okay, well, what does does that mean if I were to water daily? Well, check this out. You are about 20 minutes to 22 minutes daily equivalent watering per day. So it's not as bad as it looks. So the one thing I want you to understand is time is relevant to output if you understand your flow rate. Make no mistake, we have not had an easy journey to get up to this point. And watering has been very easy and difficult. And lately we've run into a problem with our irrigating sprinkler where that head in that corner has not been responsive. So I wanna show you what we've been doing just to get by when it's been 100 degrees out and the average daily temperature has been 90 degrees and the humidity rates are very, very low. I would say we're probably 20%, 30% at best, even when storms are rolling through. Our current Band-Aid fix for that area is just this Orby oscillating head and it is going for hours along this area. And preferably, I don't like this method because we have to water kind of during the day when we're awake, we got to turn on the faucet. So here's my solution. We got way too much evaporation coming out throughout the day. So I want to minimize that to be able to water around the irrigating system. So I'm going to use this uh, smart watering timer. This is not a sponsored video. I like a lot of these Rainpoint, Lumery, they, you've got the Orbit Beehive. They all work very well. I do like the Rainpoint because the flow has been very consistent and it's been pretty wide open. But these are really, really easy to use. Put it on the hose bib securely. Then I have a smart hub I've installed just right here off the wall. And now it is fully app driven and I can schedule out my watering times. So here's my master plan. I'm going to use a hose bib timer to control the watering. And these things are awesome because check this out. I just turn the water on just from my app and I can also turn the water off just like this. It's really that simple, but more importantly, I can schedule it. Then I've got these Orbit drive gear heads. Setup is almost complete. So I know that the water head is right here. And now what I want to do is I want to line everything up on my latitudinal and longitudinal lines. And so I'm going to be about right here. And on this end, I want it to go to 45, considering where we're watering. Never ceases to amaze me how easy it can be. So if you want a full sprinkler system and you have decent water pressure, I would say between 60 and 80 PSI, you can easily run three of these heads. Here's the moment of truth. Let's see what we got. Let's see if we uh, got it done on the first try. <laughs> oh yeah, baby, look at that. Oh, is it getting exactly where I need? This is my cutoff line and check this out. Right there, right exactly where I need it to be. This is fantastic. This one's spraying a little bit further on the pickleball court than I'd really like. So I just literally change it just like this. Two quick notches, that's it. And there we have it. Boom, we're throwing water. That's perfect. Now, I've never really been a fan of changing sprinklers and doing all this stuff, but this equipment just makes it so stinking easy. Like a lot of guys out there, this project lawn has given us our own fair share of obstacles and we're conquering them one by one and slaying that lawn. But if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, hit me up down in the comments down below. You know I'd love to help you guys out. Till the next time, guys, best in lawn, Jiu-Jitsu. We're slaying lawn.